What up, fam? Let's build a Lego Imperial Army from Pirates, not Star Wars. So since it's the United States Marine Corps' 249th birthday, with veterans the following day, I thought it would be fitting to finally build my thousand strong Imperial Army from Lego Pirates. Yes, I have a thousand soldiers to put together. Uh, no, they're not gonna be Marines. So earlier this year, I picked up Lego Eldorado Fortress. Yeah, it's taken me this long to finally do something with it. Bear with me. And after recently watching Napoleon, like four months ago, as well as replaying some of my favorite relatable Assassin's Creed games, and finally picking up one of my white whales, the Imperial flagship from one of my favorite bits and minifigs in Lomita, California. And after all of that, I finally decided to pull out of the backlog to finally build it. And at the time of purchase, I was seriously excited for this set. I don't even know why it took me this long to pull out of the backlog. It's literally just been sitting there for almost the entire year. Um, I think that's a problem. Or I'm just too busy to build nowadays. I mean, I've never really had time to do anything anyways. Better late than never. But after finally completing the build, come on, Lego, let's, let's get back to classic Lego themes like classic castle, classic pirates, and classic space. Give us a range of price points so that way parents can take a chance to buy these sets for kids. Yes, I know IP is the way to go. It's a safer bet. It's what kids want. But how we know if these sets would or would not sell if you don't give a full range of price points a chance? I know, Lego, you could afford that risk. So after building this set, I felt like I need more than just one. Since watching Josh from Josh Builds Stuff's review video on this set, it reminded me that this set is modular and I could probably get another one or two of these to make it bigger. Having the Imperial Flash dock next to this, it just doesn't work. Like, it's too small. I might need three more. I'm definitely not going to put on the priority list. Maybe if I see them on sale, who knows? Finding priority by LEGO is kind of rough nowadays, especially with how much I spent on this army. Anyways, now if you follow my channel, I currently have a standing 1100 strong Black Falcon army with another 1000 more to put together, inevitably. <laughs> I also have a small Lionite army, a small Viking army, a Stormtrooper mech army. Yes, a Stormtrooper mech army that I'm not even done putting together yet. It is kind of annoying to put more than 25 of them together. I've only built like 15 of them out of the 25. I have a clone Skittle Expeditionary Force and even a minion army, which I never finished a video for. I mean, like I finished half the video. Uh, I don't know. I just had no motivation to finish it. I mean, if you haven't noticed, I kind of fell behind on making content as far as this channel. I've been putting a lot of effort onto Sitting on a Stoop, so if you haven't been there, self-plug, check out my podcast, Sitting on a Stoop, where I hang out with a number of people within the LEGO community and have this real conversations. Self-plug, we're worried. Anyways, I got a thousand of these Imperial soldiers to put together, and like my Black Falcons, I will be separating them into units, not simply putting minifigures onto a base plate. Well, it is simply putting minifigures on a base plate, but you know what I mean. And unlike my castle armies, where they look different from figure to figure, showcasing unique characters amongst themselves, I won't be doing that so much with my Imperial Army. I mean, these guys aren't carrying heavy armor like the castle guys, so they will have more of a uniform formation and more disciplined positions to each other, like right shoulder arms carrying a musket instead of just leaning against their leg. <laughs> like how you see presentation in gentleman style warfare from hundreds of years ago to more present day formations. And like with all my other armies, I've chosen flesh tones than the classic yellow minifigure heads. And if you wanna know why, I've discussed this plenty of times in other videos. So if you wanna know, look at these videos, I'll put the links down below. And if it bothers you that much, uh, let me know your thoughts. So like my castle armies, I will be separating them into specific units. And as of right now, I will start with the basic line units, infantry, separated by regulars, militia, grenadiers, skirmishers, and light infantry. I will also inevitably have artillery and dragoons. I need to figure out how to do a band and also a command of some kind. But for now, I'm just going to do a small company of line infantry with a mix of light, regular, and grenadiers, just to see what this is gonna look like. And like when I was building up my Vikings, I had to switch the yellow hands to flesh. But unlike the Vikings, where I switched from yellow to black gloves, I went to matching flesh hands to heads. Now, this wasn't only time consuming, but it was painful on the fingers after having to switch them out over and over again. Also, I think I would have found it easier and cheaper if I just went with white gloves all around. 
but I don't know. I just want to make things hard on myself. And unlike my castle armies, where I did my best to make them different from another, such as helmets and armors used, weapons, heads, etc., these soldiers will be more uniformed. So same trousers and torsos and the same shoulder pauldrons. They'll have different heads though, but for the most part, the same cover hats. Unless they're wearing the trifold, which come in different hair color pieces. Aside from that, they're still wearing the same covers. For now, I'm gonna give the Grenadiers Shaco hats with the packs. I may give the lighter infantry packs too, depending on how many of those I picked up. All of them though, will be carrying a musket, aside from the officers. The officers though, will be dressed differently. I'm using the officer torso with a different color pauldron. They won't be carrying a musket, but a sword and a pistol. Now, depending on quantity of torsos and equipment that I have, I may give the lieutenants the regular torso with the sword and pistol and leaving the officer uniform for the command and higher ranking officers. And I'm not really sure if I'm gonna do that. It really just depends if they still have them on online pick a brick when I make that decision. But worst case scenario, I'm just gonna have to brick link them. Each company will be given a standard flag, which will follow the company command of a captain or higher. Now, accumulation of these minifigures primarily came from lego.com on their online pick a brick. I did get these early earlier in the year, and I'm not really sure on the availability of them as you're watching this video, and if they're still available to begin with. But they were not as cheap as my Black Falcons were during the time when I started buying castle figure parts in mass. I know they've jumped in price significantly since then, but they're still cheaper than getting them on Bricklink or your local bricks and minifigs. This also goes for their weapons and accessories needed to equip them. Now, I chose heads in random. I accounted for quantity available based on the different types of heads on the online LEGO pick a -brick. So noting that, I went out to Bricklink and purchased the appropriate amount of hands needed to apply to each head. And wow, the hands were not cheap. Finding them in mass was no easy task at the time of purchase. I even had difficulty finding the right hands to the right color light nougat. Like Bricklink Lego, y'all need to fix that. Like I wasted a lot of money on different types of hands to different type of nougat color heads. Like your colors are just don't match. I wasted so much money trying to get the right number of hands to the right number of heads that I purchased from online Lego pick a brick. I think I have enough, but while I was on Bricklink for this task, I found it cheaper to also accumulate horses on Bricklink rather than buying them from lego.com. I chose the older version of these horses that average around two to three dollars per than the five dollars plus on Lego online pick a brick. And as of right now, with a thousand plus Imperial soldiers, I'm in the hole about three grand like I, I need to check the receipts on that but a lot of that was actually purchased from points that i built up from buying all these other armies on lego.com i mean it's not a cheap endeavor to build an army like this anyways this is my level one of my imperial army series as of right now i have a small company of imperial soldiers with a captain in formation with the flag with lieutenants scattered in front of each platoon within the entire company now i still need to build out this company and multiply that by three add dragoons artillery and an overall command but eventually this will be a thousand strong so Happy 249th birthday to all my Marine brothers and sisters out there. Happy Veterans Day to everyone who served in the United States military. Play well.